Okay, well, I'm, of course, still playing catch-up here. Uh, the previous video I did not upload to on Thursday, so it'll be coming out Friday sometime, and I guess this one will too. Uh, this is also, just like the Friday Night Tights episode, this is post from the second uh, in Comic News. Most of the action appears to be happening in the adjacent fandom menace. Uh, as said, no one ever reported comic artist pro secrets. Our resident amphibian was rocked by the second most boring man on the internet, British Cecil. I've never heard him referred to in that manner before. Passively aggressively telling him to go fuck himself. Or did he? And of course, I've already done a video about that, so won't be watching any of the clips or anything. Or well, actually, I don't think they're clips, I think it's just links to the stream, which, you know. It's not overly helpful. Uh, British Cecil apparently was playing a game while celebrating, make that morning, being banned from Twitter. He has a toy stream, which one super chatter suggested to invite Van Skyver on. The bald Fagwa uh, passively, uh, passive aggressively, uh, states that Van Skyver omitted him and maybe slighted him by stating that he was a nobody built up by Gary Beekler. Not how Beekler is spelled. It's spelled like that. But it is pronounced Beekler, apparently, according to Gary himself. Fucking weird. I have no idea the nationality or ethnic origin or whatever of that name. Um, Ethan appears mostly confused about all this, apologizes, and states that he finds British Cecil funny. About an hour and a half uh, in the stream, it generates as it becomes the usual CG chuckle fucks. Uh, the noted additions are the better part of the duo known as Narzak, Narwhal, and Kyung Lee. I can't be asked to watch that shit. Uh, I did, so anyway. Um, and we already went over it. Uh, Frog did a second stream. Yeah, and I was expecting that to have s something to do with, with the first one. Apparently it didn't. Um, this time uh, with the least funny man on the internet, Cecil. Streaming highlights are Cecil reveals that he's making progress on his still undelivered campaign. Ethan showing some cringe-worthy fan videos, EFAB style. And E thought Anna is there as well. Yeah, she's the least thoughtish E thought, though. She never never really shows or even threatens to show anything. <laughs> uh Narwhal. This spirited fuck having shat out four ninety nine is now launching his new campaign, Earthbound Part two, Nintendo Suing Win. The book's already at thirty one thousand dollars and if I had any remaining warm feeling to CG pay piggies. This may have killed it. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as some of his other shit, but you know, it's it's still not something that appeals to me. Uh, Nerd Roddick, Gary and company have learned nothing. They're having purse puppy Lauren Chen. Uh, hopefully, to mitigate the accusations that Tom Connors hates women. <laughs> um. Is this the face of a man who'd hurt Whammon, I ask? <laughs> uh, it's not a great picture of him. Um, Nerd Rock recently announced he will be putting one of his shows with Doomcock on hiatus, and this is something that I uh, missed. Wish I had seen this uh, when I did that video. Um, had a very good conversation with Doomcock, and we have some good news and some sad news. Sad news, the Inquisition is no more. Due to my move, I will need my weekends free. Be a three- to four-month process. After that, who knows? Good news, the Exozone will, is will return weekly on Thursdays, alternating between our channels. First episode is this Thursday, 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And somebody told me that it was only going to be on Gary's channel and I expected that to sooner or later cause some tension, but uh, according to this, apparent and and according to, um, and I did I did watch uh, at least most I think of their uh, first Exo Zone, which of course I guess they would have had one uh, today or yesterday, whatever, 
at this point, and I, of course, missed that one. Um, anyway, but I did actually watch the first one, and they did say on there that, you know, this, this is where, that's where I heard this first, is <laughs> that they were going to be alternating the next week it would be on Doom, th which mean this week would be on Doomcox channel. So, apparently, that is going to be an arrangement just like they had, although uh, uh, not entirely, because apparently it's on their alternate live stream channels where they, they do, normally they do live streams on their main channels and then they move the live streams to their live channels for archiving purposes or whatever. Um, apparently they're both doing the Exozone on their secondary channels to start with. So that's different. Um, was this a message uh, not to rock the boat? Speaking of Doom Cuck, his latest seems to see him claiming victory. Yeah, and I, I, I don't remember for sure what all was in it, but I think I probably watched these uh, videos from him. Uh, the fact he never established a war existed doesn't seem to bother him. My own guess is that he wants to move forward in order to do, uh, <coughs> to do that he has, what? To create a resolution to this false narrative so he can make up, report new things. Mechamu, speaking of our land whale, uh, she's still fat, <laughs> currently is in trouble for wishing people happy Canada Day because crying Indians or whatever. She continues to be with her bitch beta Rob and they are planning a new show. And those are links to Twitter, which gives us this. Uh, if you're trying to force me to be an activist, you can pay me. I will not be bullied by someone for wishing a chink if my viewers. I think that's supposed to be chunk of, but anyway. A happy Canadia Day. I don't know if that's misspelled or not. Uh, some people seem to pronounce it that way on purpose. Um, you are not allowed to guilt trap me any more than BLM or anyone else does. Do you understand me or do I need to get loud? When are you not loud, Micah? Natives and their allies wanting to... Wanting to what? Cancel Canada Day. Hope you just get over it. Ah, well. Um, as far as I'm concerned, all the Native Americans whining about things that are over and done with, it's like, sorry guys, but it's too late. Y you know, this war was already fought, you lost. Get over it. <laughs> hey, you're the ones who need to fucking get over it. it it's over. Um... Anyway, and then this is the second link. Thank you. Rob and I are doing a new show since Andre and Tom pulled the he's not fired, but we're ghosting him and not giving him any work crap. Because seriously, how dare they tell Rob he couldn't be on my channel or cut off access to my community. Well, I can understand if he's their business partner or whatever that they're like, you know, we've, you know, Mecca has been a real problem for us. You know, it'd be really good if you didn't have anything to do with her. So, I mean, I get that. She made herself persona non grata. You know, it wasn't, wasn't anybody else's doing. It was hers. Uh, Aha, 20K to own Kiwi Farms. Let's go. Can I be excused? I have a note from my mom. Second most boring man on the internet, British Cecil. Wait, who? British Cecil. Huh? A nobody built up by Gary Beekler. Oh, he means ass. <laughs> well, as I can't remember whether I've actually stated or not, um, I, I'm pretty sure as was in the tens of thousands or whatever uh, of subs before being associated with Gary and other people in his sphere and... Obviously, as his channel blew up after that, it's like, you know, he, you know, he did uh, get benefit from that relationship. Then there's no point pretending that that's not the case now, you know, but that's a far cry from saying that well, he was, you know, an absolute nobody and that, and that he didn't, you know, he didn't, you know, do anything, you know, before then. It's like, no, he, you know, he had a channel and he was growing it and he was, you know, he was doing reasonably well. But he definitely benefited from his association with Gary and others. Um, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, 
Yeah, Guy's not quite as bad as Cecil, but as pretty damned obnoxious. And Nasser's doing his new rip-off of gritter, crim, gr critters and gremlins and uh, all those other things, which is back as uh, he's calling it creepsters. Which I'm. It's really hard for me to believe that name's not already taken, but you know, whatever. Um, EVS showed up in the chat of Razorfist Solomon Kane stream only to be ignored. Razor did the same to Anna a couple weeks ago. Hmm. Where the f is a Eve Razor? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Is there more drama brewing of some kind? Of course, Razor ignores people all the time. You know. Uh, then we got those two that are, and here we go with the Exozone. I think I've got this queued up on something. What was it? Right, and just taking every aspect of it as they can and changing it. They're trying to rewrite history and fix things, fix the problematic history that's much too white. So they're going to wokewash it. Wokewash Tolkien's next. Tol Tolkien is, is in a few days. Uh, so no, this this is going on, be and and it's because they're scared. It's not because they actually give a fuck. Fuck, nobody thought they did for one second. It's uh, it's the path of least resistance. Uh, they they are afraid. They are scared to death to be labeled as racist after they have been labeling people racist for a year. So uh, it's it's not having it's it's having allies and not friends. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. You can trust friends. You can't trust allies. They're just your ally until they're not. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, my friend said it's not fun anymore. And what's going to start happening is they're not going to be attracting talent anyway. And that's starting to happen already. Uh -huh. So they're not attracting the best talent. Uh, there's a finite amount of talented people. They're going to go to other places or start working on their own or start content creating. And they're not going to be going to Hollywood anymore. So Hollywood will now start really sucking, which it already has. Uh, yeah. And without that talent, they can't make good art. Without good art, uh, you know, strong brands like Marvel. They can, you know, Marvel can survive three shitty shows on Disney Plus and a couple of bombs. I think they could. And if they turn things around, they'd be fine. But they're not going to. We know they're not going to. And it takes years to turn around. So it does. It does. And I, I'm seeing more and more, uh, you know, uh, CRT crap in terms of, uh, you know, uh, cartoonists and, and political commentators and stuff. Uh, like Joy Reid went on an insane rant at, at one point uh, attacking uh, somebody I follow on Twitter. I can't remember his name, but uh, he, he's a guy that talks about critical race theory a lot and, and poo poos it and, and, and rightly so. And they're trying to turn this into some kind of. Um, political uh, politicized uh, divide which is complete nonsense it, it really is because there are plenty of people in in our uh, sphere uh, on the left and on the right reasonable sane people that hate this shit it is always the extremists uh, the extremists that that, that are, are embracing this garbage as a small vocal minority but i think the fact that i am seeing these extremists uh, you know reacting and, and trying to to, to poo poo this and to, to divide us means that we're winning because i think people the, the, the people look when you start introducing this shit in schools to uh, to kids, uh, that's going to get normie attention real fucking fast, and oh, I yeah. think that it's permeating at this point, Gary. And and they're they're trying to lash out to try and save it, but it's doomed. I, I absolutely oh. believe it's doomed. It is doomed because I mean, just so you guys know, the premise of critical race theory is we live in a we live in a racist country that's always been racist and always will be racist. And if you're white, you're a racist no matter what. Yep. Fuck that shit. That's not you know what that's not a good place to start with me. For, uh, don't project <laughs> on uh, for one you know on Doomcock or, or me or anybody else what we are without talking to us first. And that is only meant to tear down Western civilization. Let's like drop the pretense, please. Let's cut the bullshit. It's communist bullshit. That's what it is. And it's uh, it's 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 the socialists who really are communists who can't admit they're fucking communists. So they call themselves democratic socialists. You know, uh, that's that's what the fuck they are. And no, I am not a Republican, but Republicans are persecuted. Christians are persecuted right now more than fucking anybody, more than anybody. Uh, that's why I, I, I they're more than welcome here. And I'll have I'm happy to talk to them. I'm happy to listen to them and support them. You know, I don't agree with them on everything, but uh, we don't need to. And but that has clearly been the prosecution. They have been labeled um, Nazis, and uh, I've been labeled a Nazi. And uh, I'm a uh, I'm one of those. Um, Everyone that disagrees has been labeled a Nazi. Exactly, it is right. If right. Jordan Peterson, for God's sakes, Jordan yeah. Peterson. Soft spoken. Jo Jordan Peterson's like made out to fucking to be the devil. Yeah, and, uh, absurd. And it got to the guy, man. It, it, yeah, I, I I understand. I mean, like, look at the stuff you know we get, uh, and then. T okay, so you know that gives you a taste of it. Um, as you can see, they did not stay on topic. Um, the show is supposed to be about UFOs, ancient civilizations, you know, bullshit like that. And it's really funny to listen to them, you know, especially the way that Doomcock talks about it. He's one of those guys that thinks that all this real world stuff that's going on with, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, well, let's just say disease. I mean, we all, uh, you know, Hopefully you know that it's it's not exactly organic, uh, but that and um, lockdowns and whatnot and uh, the you know all all the political uh, shit and you know the not election that <laughs> etc cetera, etc cetera, you know 
Doomcock is the kind of guy that looks at all that and thinks that all of that is meant to distract us from UFOs. You know, and th that's the truth that they're trying to hide. And it's like, no, dude, you've got it completely, you know, completely backwards. <laughs> oh, man. No, it's like, no, bullshit like UFOs and, and stuff is meant to distract you from uh, caring about real world things and taking any kind of, you know, action that might aid in the toppling of the people who are in power because they are desperate to hang on to their power. Anyway, so that's kind of funny. But like I said, they clearly, and, you know, Gary, to his credit here, is being uh, pretty damn based for somebody who's... Uh, fairly milquetoast in most respects when it comes to politics. And so they delve into pop culture and they delve into politics and they talk about a lot of things. And I will admit that their their discussion that they had uh, about Atlantis and where it supposedly uh, is, or rather was, um, is quite interesting. I have no idea whether it's accurate, but it is interesting. And it is also interesting, I suppose, you know, a bit of trivia to just note that in... Some some Star Trek book or other, not a novel, but just like a one of those you know guide to the galaxy type shit uh, things that they you know occasionally put out. Um, I believe there was one of those that discussed uh, something that I think was mentioned in the um, what was it season the season two finale and the season three premiere of The Next Generation was The Best of Both Worlds, Parts 1 and 2, where Picard became Locutus of Borg. And then the episode after that, which would have been, you know, I guess, uh, what was that? The Well, anyway, I, th I think it was the very next episode after the after the part two or whatever, where he goes to visit his family, his brother and his brother's family in France. And... He's talking, I believe, and that if I remember correctly, it's been years since I saw that episode, but I believe, if I remember correctly, he's talking about um, leaving Starfleet to work on Project Atlantis, which is some kind of terraforming project where they're apparently going to, you know, recreate, you know, the, I don't know whether it was meant to be realist, you know, real or in, in that timeline or whether it was still mythical. Uh, Atlantis, in the, you know, by creating this continent in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and pretty sure the position of it in the map that that I saw in this supplemental book or whatever uh, was the same same uh, place as where Gary pointed out and said that's where he believes that the actual Atlantis once existed. It's an interesting idea. Like I said, I have no idea whether it's inter uh, whether it's actually accurate or not. Um, you know, it's it's real easy to you know to suspect not, but <laughs> but it could be. You never know. Truth is, uh, you know, all too often stranger than fiction. But anyway, um, so there's you know there's all kinds of things. So it's not it's not a bad show. And like I said, the the most interesting thing about it is that um, in a way is that it's on Nerdrotic Live. Like it was streamed live on Nerdrotic Live. Yeah, you know, which like I said, it's pretty much never do that it does that and i believe at the end they mentioned that or or maybe somebody in the chat mentions maybe one of the mo uh, the mods or something mentioned that uh the next the following week which would have been uh the uh, just just yesterday or whenever um that it was going to be on doomcox channel except not doomcox channel not overlord dvd it was going to be on his harvey cthulhu channel or whatever Har harvey's whatever the fuck it's called uh the harvey zone i think maybe is what that anyway but that's the archive channel for all of, of Doomcock's live, <coughs> live streams. So that was interesting that they're doing this thing live on their secondary channels. Which, of course, means that if you weren't quite in the loop on where it was going to be and you weren't subscribed to their live channels, or you were but you didn't have alerts turned on, then you weren't aware, you didn't get a notification. Uh, so, I don't know. But anyway... As some of the happenings, it's, uh, given the fact that they are switching off and whatnot, and maybe they're trying to use this to build up their secondary channels to get more subs and whatnot over there, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I would think that the likelihood of, uh, further friction, at least considerable friction between the two of, the, of these guys, uh, has been significantly reduced. 
if it had been just on Gary's channel and he was getting all the super chat money and that was that, then I would expect you know there to be a falling out between them at some point. You know, maybe not even would have taken that long. But since it appears to be what sounds like a fairly equitable arrangement between the two of them, I expect we can, you know, we can, uh, you know, we can look forward to them being together on this thing for quite some time with no real problems. Unless, of course, they fall back into their old habits of not managing to actually do it, even though they have committed to doing it. I don't know why it was that they couldn't manage it before, but they sure as shit didn't ever seem to. They kept talking about, oh yeah, we're going to do that, and then they never did. So, whatever. Alright. Until the next one.